everybody, welcome back to the Catech Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today is going to be a dual review from Black Balloon Publishing. So there are two books that they sent me. I absolutely would recommend one of these and the other one I liked, but I had some reserves and I will tell you why. So the first one was the one that I had some reserves on. Now, this story was really interesting and really, really something to to admire. It is a nonfiction. It is Louise Amended, a memoir by Louise Krug. Now, this is the story of Louise after, so she's written this now, after a brain tumor, and that changed her entire life. So in the beginning of this book, she is explaining to you what her lifestyle was like prior to the tumor. She was a journalist, all about the ETV, the perfectionist, the blonde, the the just idyllic kind of lifestyle of waking up at noon, going after the job, and then coming back in after a party or two. She really was living life to the fullest and living what might be some people's idea of a perfect lifestyle. I really, really liked what she did, which was she discussed, first she discussed her experience prior to the brain tumor, then she talked about the experience of the brain tumor leading up to it, and then the experience during the brain tumor, the fear, the ex the exhaustion, the, the pain, the suffering, and then the aftermath. I really enjoyed it, but it was written in such a way where it would switch between the first and third person in like, I'm not even talking like just chapters. I'm talking about like from paragraph to paragraph. And it really stressed me out. Now, I don't know if that is her style of writing or if that is because she struggles with writing or what. I just found that that was a real downer for me and it lessened my enjoyment because I wasn't able to immerse myself entirely in the story. I felt as though I couldn't just sink in. I felt as though I was constantly trying to figure out what was happening and that was a real saddening effect for me. However, I would read another Louise Krug memoir or book because I do like her writing style when I'm kind of in the flow of it and understand what's going on. This is a short book, so it wasn't really hard for me to finish. It was 182 pages. It took about two, three days, which isn't normal for me with a st story this short, but because of the flipping back and forth from fourth, the first and third person, I was, I was struggling. But again, really think that it's an interesting story. If you're interested in people with experiences of brain trauma, this is really, really well done. And it really executes the experience before, after and during. So I would say it's a read if you can get your hands on it. But I wouldn't say it's one to chase. Now chasing though... If you haven't heard me talk about this enough times already, let me talk about this again, because oh, this is incredible. This is Fat Man and Little Boy by Mike McGinnis. Again, I will read anything Mike McGinnis comes out with. This is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I think that this was one of my favorite books of last year. It did not make it to my top 10, but that is not because it was a bad book. It is because I had to pick and it was really stressful. It was really stressful. So first and foremost, let me start with the conversation that this talks about so many different things in such a, it's not the shortest book, but it's definitely larger font. It's well done. It has the deckled edges, which sometimes I like, sometimes I don't. But in this case, it works. I think this is a beautifully published book period. Then the story inside of it is phenomenal. I am obsessed. So the story is that there are two men, two people, a young man and a little boy. The man is extremely obese and fat and he wakes up in an environment where he is basically unable to move and he has two 
guards who are guarding him and feeding him sometimes, but not really, and they're ignoring him. And if you don't like graphic depictions of people's bodies and excrements and those sorts of things, maybe steer clear of this. But anyway, he realizes that these guards have left and they're not coming back and that he's no longer going to be fed. So he has to figure out how to move on. So he gets up and he starts to move, but then he meets a little boy. Now this little boy is explaining that his first experience of existence is with an explosion. So the two of them begin to travel through Japan now. These two characters are based on the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima. They are based on violence, devastation, death, and really, really graphic depictions of how the bombs affected the landscape. They come across people who are on the verge of death. They come across people in places that are just soaked and saturated in aftermath of of the bombs. They come across people who have experienced severe damage but are still living. It is really, really hard hitting. But the thing about this that I loved is the underlying context where they are discussing whether or not bombs should be normalized, whether or not the atomic bomb, nuclear arms, uh, products of war should be normalized. Should it feel normal that we have these creations in our midst, in our world, or should it be something that we are more aware of? In this book, it, it becomes more and more and more normalized as the book continues on. These people who come into contact with them, they see them as just normal people, everyday people, even though death and destruction has followed them in different ways. It was beautifully executed, wonderful, and masterful. I enjoyed this so much, and I think that anyone who has any interest in kind of discussing and looking deeper into the experience of wartime, this is fabulous. I highly, highly recommend this. 10 out of 10 would recommend. So those are the two books from Black Balloon Publishing. I adore them. I think they are the sweetest publishers. I definitely plan to work with them again if they will have me, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!